Hello, and welcome to this fireside chat for FinTech Talents Virtual Spring, looking at the future of banking. I'm Liz Lumley, and joining me today are two CEOs. So we have Paul Taylor, CEO of Thought Machine, and Mark Mullen, who is CEO of Adam Bank. Hello, gentlemen, how are you? Uh, very well, thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Um, I hate to I hate to bring up uh, our first question, but I mean, if you notice, we're all sort of working from home and working on our laptops and on webcams. So I'm going to have to bring up the global pandemic and, and COVID-19. Um, and there's been a lot of, um, you know, sort of talk and, and, and articles about the financial services industry's um, reaction to COVID-19 um, and the impact of the global pandemic you know, on the industry. So Mark, I, I'll probably start with you. You know, what have, what, what have you seen, you know, of what's happening right now? What, what, is, what is your take on, on what we're all going through in this industry? Gosh, it's a, it's a small question with a very big answer. So, <laughs> so if, you, if you sit in a bank, it's, uh, you know, you, you, in some respects, you're at one level trying to remember what happened in 2008 at the same time, this is different, um, and yet some of the things that we did after 2008 as a banking industry have put us in a better position, I guess, to weather this. So, you know, the immediate sort of things that have happened is, you know, we're all working from home. So my entire business are working from home, including our contact centers, all the roles essentially using the cloud. Um, and suddenly we're asking ourselves, well, we've got a headquarters building at all, and will we ever get back there? Uh, and if we do, and how will we manage that process safely? Uh, at the same time, we've got a business to run, so um, we've got customers to serve, products to sell, loans to make, decisions to underwrite, uh, and we've been trying to make sure that that happens as seamlessly as possible. We've narrowed the service window. We used to be 24-7, 365. We've cut the service window down to 12 hours, just okay. at a practical level, having people you know, handling calls at 1 o'clock in the morning if they haven't got the space to do it at home just doesn't work. Um, so we, you know, we've got to look after our own people. Um, we've got business customers and, and residential mortgage customers who are taking payment holidays. Mm. We've got to administer that. So there's been lots of government schemes and interventions mm. that we've got to adapt to. Um, we're participating now in the Sybils, which is the business interruption loan scheme um, to support small businesses and, and making those loans. Hopefully starting, um, we'll get clearance at the end of this business day. And so that's you know an important step for us. Um, and then, of course, we've got to manage our own relationship with our regulators. So the cadence of interactions have, have increased hugely. Um, uh, it's really difficult, you know, to, to, to give you a, a, an understanding of the magnitude of impact on this little business, let alone the businesses and the customers that we're serving. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been amazed at kind of the speed uh, at which a lot of a lot of the organizations have responded to the pandemic. You know, you mentioned things like mortgage holidays and 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 other things that are backed by the government. So, Paul, maybe I'll turn it over to you. You know, from the service provider side, you know, how how are you seeing the impact COVID nineteen has had on your business and and your and your community? Yes, well, obviously it's a multifaceted uh, issue. So, in terms of in terms of our operations, uh, not too difficult. I mean, we are a software company, and of course, you know, the reason we're here is we're supplying software to uh, as a Marks company. But so, it, so we don't have the issues of um, we we don't have you know we, we work in natural cadence uh, cadence anyway. It has been a little bit difficult for the software developers to work from home because they're normally used to three screens and Linux boxes and everything else. But but but, but once we're over the difficulty, uh, not too bad. Uh, but but I think especially for your audience, I think the more pertinent question is how does it affect uh, our product offering and how does it affect mm -hmm. how we see the market? And I think there we do see a very very dramatic shift of sentiment. And um, previously, with Thought Machine, who sell you know cloud native core banking engines, our our pitch was very much around uh, you know modern modern software, uh, you know hardware cost, speed of deployment, flexibility of product, and so on and so forth. Uh, but now we're having a lot of conversations around uh, you know operational resilience and how do we help the bank in human capacity to do this? And we talked about mortgage holiday and things like that. So so with a modern platform with, with flexible products adding a mortgage holiday capability in it, it is one change request into the system, relatively simple to do, relatively simple to roll out. And we wouldn't want to be putting, uh, and, uh, and and things like that, and, and new loan application systems, we want to get those fully automated and fully online. And having a you know, super flexible you know, API microservice cloud native solution helps in all that. 
because what we want to be, what we want to do is let the bankers do all the banking and everything else and, and not have to be panicking and going oh damn, our, our system doesn't do that you know we're going to have to now uh, you know, to, you know to kind of tie ourselves in knots just mm -hmm. something that has now been announced as a kind of as a, as a normal expected activity in the bank so it, 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 so uh, a lot of the conversation has now gone on to uh, what can we do how can we make the bank more robust from a uh, you know uh, from the cap capability if we don't may not have people to throw onto this problem uh, can we do these changes and these fixes autom automatically and, 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 and that's the biggest change yeah i mean it's interesting i've been talking to a lot of developers recently and um you know one thing that comes up a lot is you know our team's distributed and remote anyway you know where things haven't changed that much in terms of delivering products and services so it's it's interesting to see that um so I wanted to move on a little bit for a talk about um, innovation. You know, so we, we had a panel earlier on today, which is really talking about sort of the, the the decade of fintech revolution that we've all experienced in this industry and kind of the next 10 years. Um, so Thought Machine and, and Adam Bank have kind of been part of that whole fintech innovation wave uh, that, that we've seen. Um, I kind of want you to look over to, you know, maybe the other side of the mountain, that tipping point. You know, wh where do you see the innovation? Um, where do you see some of the driving forces for where we're going for the next five or 10 years? I, might, I, I think, you know what, I'm going to start, Paul, I'm going to go right back to you because I left you last. Uh, right, and the, the thing is, it's. Uh, I mean, nobody needs to be told that banking is a is a somewhat slow moving industry, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but there there is a huge amount of momentum behind change. But I still think we're really in early days of of, of the impact. Um, I mean, uh, you know, so banks like Atom, you know, ha have got you know you know fantastic new platforms, pr product offerings, and, and and things like that. But but the we you know we are still we still haven't got. Um, to the stage where every bank uh, can deploy all these at scale and at such a and at such a capacity that we really see all the benefits. So, so that will take years to work around the system as customer numbers grow and things like that. We can really see, and and, and you know, a key thing that uh, Thought Machines um, focused on is cost to income ratio and, and the cost efficiency of banks. But I still think that the, the, that's many years of customer acquisition, um, it, you know, in the neo banks. And of adding more product into the neo banks, so that you know the balance sheet grows, and you and you can really see all that. So, so, it, so from our from our platform perspective, uh, the, the the core things that we use, which are cloud native, microservice, API driven technology, you know everything in the cloud, everything automated. Uh, you know, it, it, we're not looking to more of that for the innovation. What we're looking to that is to get that at scale into the industry. So that banks can really get get the uh, get the benefit of it, and I still see that taking a few years. Once that becomes the norm, then I think banks get to doing the things that they keep on talking about what they want to do, which is innovative customer experiences and things like that, and low cost, and being able to add highly customized, highly configurable products for, for each user, and, 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 and so on. But 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 I, I still think we need to get to get the momentum of deployment there. Uh, and to do it. and if people sometimes ask me, well, we've heard about this. It's been around a long time. When are we? When's it going to get there? So, well, it, it will get there. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm not sure it's quite a tipping point, but um, the cloud. I always say the cloud is one-way street. You know, you don't, you learn it quickly or slowly. Uh, but, but but there's there's nobody reversing out of the cloud and, and going back to on-prem solutions. <laughs> I, I I I like tipping point because I like to live in hope. <laughs> Paul. So, my, Mark, I'm going to turn to you. I mean, Adam Bank is in that group um, that are, are generally classed as challenger banks, digital only banks. You know, where do you see the next wave of fintech innovation happening over the next few years? So, yeah, it's important to to remember banking is a very old profession and it's a very highly regulated profession. So to some extent, you've got uh, what might be described as, as constraints or a straitjacket around some of the things that you can and cannot do. And that's just the, that's just the nature of the industry. It's not an industry that's made up of, of um, if you like, material substance. It's not, it's not a physical business. It's, uh, you know, banking doesn't exist at all except in the, in the rule book. Um, and, 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 and therefore, one of the objectives of bankers is to try and take friction out of the system you, you know you're trying to make money as efficient as possible because at the end of the day my money's no better than yours and so if i'm lending it to you you want to make sure that that the cost of me doing it is as low as possible 
uh, so that you pay as little as possible. Let's be really, really frank about it. And if you look at the banking industry, to Paul's point, you know, most of the big banks who still dominate UK banking, for example, and for that matter, global banking, let's not be coy about it, are running cost efficiency ratios well in excess of 50 or 60 percent. Um, and the customer is paying for it. And the reason that they dominate the industry is that they buy the competition out um, and they have such enormous capital and liquidity advantages that it doesn't matter that they're inefficient. Um, the one digitalization of the entire industry is changing the story. Mm. And COVID is going to act as an accelerant because there's lots of people who are not going back. Yeah, this, this idea that you're just going to restore back to pre-COVID sort of operational models, just nonsense. Yeah. A number of very, very senior big bank leaders have already said, you know, why do we have headquarters in Canary Wharf? Um, and, and that's about why do we have all these branches? Mm. Cash has fallen, the use of cash has fallen off a cliff. Do you think people are going to be, you know, using cash in the same the same level post COVID as they were pre? No, no, for, for obvious reasons. So, the banking industry is going to have to adapt one way or the other. And the two drivers for change in banks have been uh, regulators telling us what to do, and you saw that in the banking crisis. Or the other one is customer behavior changes, and it and it changes outside the industry. So, new technology gets introduced. Bankers are magpies. They look for an application, they suck it in, and they see what it can do to transform their business models. And that will continue. And then finally, every now and again, and it, it, it's the same in Paul's business as it is in mine, somebody has a good idea. Honestly, don't underestimate the idea that, you know, you employ good people, they're clever, they come up with ideas, and that drives innovation. It's lightning in a bottle. I'm afraid you just can't bottle it that easily. But, it, but, it's, but it's important, you know, if you create a culture of innovation, you encourage it, then ideas... Um, good ones will find their way to the top. To the top. Yes, and I must have. When I was talking about the innovation, I was really talking about it from my perspective, which is kind of platform cloud technology. Um, and uh, Mark's absolutely right that the, the, the difficulty and uh, the kind of uh, resistance to um, and all the factors you mentioned uh, make the the consumer. Um, led innovation slower and uh, less frequent than, than it should be. Remove that, and I believe uh, we will certainly see something. And I also believe that it, it is, you know, regarding the cash point, I mean, we moved from a, a cash, cash a hybrid cash card society to mm -hmm. uh, to a non-cash society in a number of weeks. And I was in the yeah. shop the other day, somebody tried to pay with money, and I went, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Don't don't walk into Sainsbury's with paper money. You'll be thrown out. <laughs> and, uh, and I went shopping the other day, and I, I had to get a pound to put into the trolley with a little slot. I thought I, 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 I that is literally the only use of money that I have. The only use of cash, and uh, and it just seems so antiquated. And there's a but there's a guy outside the shop giving you pound coins because he knows that no one's got any anymore. Uh, you know, so, it's, 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 so once it happens, people people move pretty quick, and if you cannot adapt to that. People don't deliberately just, you know, people just move on and, and, and they you look pretty stupid that you, that you haven't made the change. Yeah, I mean, I love the fact, I think both of you touched on something um, very, you know, that, that's very common whenever anyone talks about innovation, that it, it it's about people, whether it's how the consumers are behaving or your clients are behaving or just the people you hire and it's about culture. And that seems to be that common factor in any sort of movement of innovation. It's, it all boils down to people at the end of the day. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, uh, uh, I I went into technology so that I could just play with my computers and uh, and everything else. But, but 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 then you realize you can only have so so much done that. And then I, I've kind of completely reversed and I've built the company. And the biggest joy I get from Thought Machine uh, is working with all the great people and all the great clients I have. And the technology is uh, it, you know is nearly an enabler for that. Cool. So I'm moving on to my next question that I really want to talk about Thought Machine and Adam Bank working together. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about this? Uh, about this? So, so Mark, why don't I start with you about the partnership with, uh, with Thought Machine? Sure. So, so, so uh, we met with Thought Machine some years ago now when, when we were both younger, both <laughs> as businesses and individuals, and, and we were both at much earlier stages of our growth and development. And um, we were intrigued and excited by what uh, what they were talking about, which was um, a very radically different uh, interpretation of what a core banking platform should be and, and what it should do and what it shouldn't do. Um, and we stayed in touch. Um, and ultimately, that translated into uh, work on a proof of concept. Um, and 
Um, and ultimately, we started formal, if you like, engineering work uh, about 18 months, two years ago, yeah. uh, with a view to uh, essentially replatforming uh, Atom, which is a strange thing to do for such a new business. But, we, you know, we were quite an early starter in the sort of, if you like, neobank um, uh, story. And, and there mm -hmm. were certain things we just couldn't do at the time. So deploying the whole platform to the cloud just wasn't possible, legally possible, never mind technically possible. Mm -hmm. It is now. And instead of looking for, if you like, uh, um, take what we have and stick it in the cloud, we thought it was more important to look for uh, something that was designed, truly cloud native technology, mm -hmm. truly engineered to 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 take advantage, full advantage of, of, of cloud computing. At the same time, we, we determined that we wouldn't just look at the core bank, the core banking uh, platform, we'd also re revisit all of our technologies so that the entire system, the entire ecosystem is calibrated against itself. Because oftentimes you find with banking uh, suites, as it were, that it's as good as the bottleneck. And it's not necessarily one system that causes you to be inefficient or slow or expensive. It's all of the componentry. And so we've been looking to try and recalibrate everything we do uh, and create a truly integrated cloud-based or cloud computing-based uh, solution, of which you know, Thought Machine sets up the core. And, mm. and, and that works just about finished, actually. <laughs> to be fair, Paul, you know, the, the work we're doing now, which is final stages of testing in beta, uh, has mm -hmm. nothing to do with TM per se. We're actually testing all of the technologies and we're looking to bring a new product to market literally in days um, and, and, and really get, get, get motoring. Excellent. So, so Paul, do you want to, want to comment on, on, on the, the sort of the, the journey that, that your two organizations have had together over the past few years? Yes, yeah, so I think Mark's given a, a very fair overview. When we met, we were all a bit younger. Uh, and uh, but I'll say that the thought machine talks about it. Uh, talks about the bank that it works with uh, as partners, and and that that's the way it's felt all the way through this. That that you know we have taught uh, Atom a lot about the uh, about cloud computing, and and Atom has taught us a lot about banking, and about y y yes, but you know we really need these bits uh, to work, and you know and really really getting us focused, getting the teams aligned, and and it's been a great it's been a great spirit of partnership uh, to get through this. We're also very, um, we're also you know very proud of uh, that you know that Atom backed us early, uh, and Atom saw it kind of before other people saw it, and mm -hmm. now of course everybody's seeing it. That and well, yeah, that's that's like you know when you, you when you discover a band in the early days and you're proud of it. But the uh, you know but but it, it's it's uh, cloud computing and banking is now becoming mainstream, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is great. But it, it's been it's been a long journey, and and to see. The, the difficulties that uh, that a bank like Adam has by traditional rules, you know, it's painful to watch because you, you don't want to have banks always being held back by, oh, we'd love to do this, but it's too too difficult, it's too expensive, it's too slow, uh, and everything else. So, so you know, we, we see our end goal as providing a platform to Adam, and then Adam, without asking us, you know, just go and build the products and, and customer propositions that they want. That, that's the whole point. I mean, obviously, we want to stay in touch and see how it goes, but but, but we shouldn't have to be changing the platform and adding things and all this kind of stuff. It, it should be an, an enabler to innovate banking products, and then banks should be able to go and uh, build what they want on top of it. And, and I think we're you know we're far down the far down the journey there. Excellent. So, Paul, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with you because I'm glad you mentioned you know cloud computing is now mainstream. You know why why is why is cloud component cloud banking infrastructure important for customers? Well, um, it, it, it is an infrastructure play, and um, I think it's fair to say that the, the average person isn't going to wake up one day and go, "Oh, my banking banks in the cloud, how amazing!" But, 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 but in indirect ways, I mean, it, it's a bit like saying, you know, uh, how does somebody, uh, you know, do, do people notice that Netflix is in the cloud and BBC is not on the cloud? Well, I mean, maybe they don't know, but they go, "Hang on, wait a minute, it's all on demand. It all works. It works on my phone. It works on my tablet. Mm -hmm. It works on my..." You know, and uh, and uh, you know uh, the broadcast channels uh, j just a bit, just look a, look a bit slow. And um, what cloud does is it just it is the most technology that is launched today is launched on the cloud. Nearly everything, financial mm -hmm. services, because of many of the reasons Mark said a while ago, because of uh, incumbent power and because of regulator uh, worries, um, has not made that leap so far. Uh, but it reduces the cost. It, increases the resiliency it, it hugely increases the security 
mm. and and it just allows for a far more uh, a, a, a far more flexible architecture. So so uh, no, I, I don't think that the, the the customers will see it overnight, but they will go. Oh yeah, remember when we had to use branches? And what was that other thing? Oh yes, call centers. Remember, remember that? And, and remember when? Remember when we used to complain about banks? And yeah, whatever happened to that? <laughs> so I think there'll be that there. Maybe there'll be a, a Channel Five show saying, uh, you know, a family goes back to the the banking world of the 2010s, and everyone just <laughs> laughing and, and so on and so forth. But uh, it, it, but that's it. The, pur the purpose of the technology is is to take. It, you know, banks cause too much difficulty and too much pain to their end users. The first thing we need to get rid of, get rid of all that, and everybody just sees at least a seamless experience. Part two is then to enrich our lives with, with, a, with a bunch of good features. But it's all about, it's all about removing the, the problems. We cannot have mm. pain filling, ATMs crashing, all that kind of stuff. We've got to stop that. So, I mean, that really leads me into into my final question that we can we can wrap up this fireside chat with. And and since I've just gone to you for two, I'm, I'm going to go over to Mark for this question. So last year at our festival, we had a keynote debate where we asked people to, to answer the question, where we are going, do we need banks? Um, and, and, and Paul mentioned in his answer, you know, removing the pain of banks. Um, and a lot of people discussed, does that mean removing banks? entirely to get rid of that pain. So I know, Mark, I asked you earlier about, you know, the next wave of innovation, the next few years, but why don't you go further, you know, the next 20 years, 30 years, 100 years, that documentary about 2020 and 21st century banking. What do you think the future holds for us in terms of banking? That's a great question. So, so I'd make a distinction between banking and how banking is done, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because it, it, you have to rec respect the fact that uh, the point I made earlier, banks just a set of rules. It's got no substance. Therefore, the rules might change. But the essentials of banking are to say that that it's a borrowing and saving, um, if you like, uh, construct. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, at, at its heart is this concept called leverage. And, and, and with leverage comes maturity transformation and mismatch management. Right. And that's banking. And, and it's a very, very efficient. It's quite volatile as a business model. But it's also a very efficient business model because it essentially, you know, allows you to create money and then to use that money, hopefully, wisely to invest in growth. So so people might not like banks because it's a pretty unfashionable industry. And the word bank is not a very popular word. Let's be honest. And we love but, banks here. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. But but let's be really, really honest. Mm. You know, um, it might be fashionable to say you don't need them or you don't need banks, but you do. And until somebody comes up with a better model, they're here to stay. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I happen to believe in the model. So that might set me to sort of one side to be stoned more quickly. Mm -hmm. But 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 I actually think the model is a value added model to our society. It can be done better. It can be consumed differently. And I think that's what changes. You mm -hmm. don't need a banking license to offer payments. If you're going to hold a banking license, then you're really about borrowing and saving. Let's be clear about it. Mm -hmm. And you can do it efficiently. You can be fast. You can be trustworthy. You can offer good value. At the end of the day, my earlier point, it's about money. Make it cheap, please. Because that 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 that, that expense, it's the money is, is, is there for a purpose. I'm interested in my house. I'm not interested in the bank that helped me buy it. And so, so, so when you ask about the future of banking, I think I can see a division between payment services provision and banking. I, but until somebody decides that, that the leverage model is defunct, and you know, peer-to-peer -peer was an attempt to challenge the leverage model, and frankly, I think it's failed. Um, but the leverage model itself says that banks are an immensely powerful and important part of our economic societies, and, and that I believe in. In terms of the future of banking, um, um, and how banking is consumed, and whether all banks need to do all things, no, 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 no. That's absolutely open for, 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 for debate. I don't believe that big banks mm -hmm. are potentially better for customers. They're bloody difficult to regulate. They're very, very expensive. They're very slow. If you look at the six biggest banks in the UK, as a for example, right, they on average pay their instant access savers 0.1%. So they have between them a thousand years of banking experience. They have about 80 to 90% of all the customers in the UK and they're paying their customers 0.1%. Please explain how that is working in the interests of customers. Yeah. So that, that's what changes. 
Um, uh, I hope that was a rhetorical question. You weren't actually asking me to explain that one, Mark. But uh, <laughs> it, 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 but I will say this in a, you know even more uh, you know, stark fashion: that, that, that you know the balance sheet and deposit and lending capability of the bank is fundamental to any economy. It, it is just impossible to imagine how any economy can work uh, without that. And and it is a fundamental building block in the modern kind of uh, free market economy. And money creation and a credit is is, is that is not what people think banks do, but, but bankers know that that's what banks do. Now, so long as you do that, and so long as you do that, uh, then then you know that is the must have. And it is what, to me, as a non-banker, it's one of the most beautiful business models that's ever existed. It, it is a little bit, uh, you know, it has risks, let's say, because, uh, you, you, you know, you, you, you are doing a lot of things that, uh, that, that are, uh, you know, that are actually far harder to do than a normal business. But, but that is beautiful and it is fundamental. But for example, but moving money, let's just say moving money and assessing credit risk, you know, moving money, it, it is ridiculous that it is st still too hard. I mean, it, you should be able to move the world money uh, and it should cost a billionth of a pound, uh, you know, uh, to, to, do, to do each thing. And for example, in assessing risk, uh, again, we're very crude. We should, every, it, it, it would be a great society where we could accurately and fairly measure everybody's credit risk and give them a loan that they can repay, nothing more, nothing less, and interested, not punish the people who, uh, don't have uh, great uh, uh, credit scores, uh, um, and so on and so forth. So, it, 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 so banking have become uh, much less fair, uh, much more transparent. And um, but whether it will ever enter the forefront of consciousness, I'm not sure in a positive way, or people will just kind of remember. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, banking. Yeah, I've thought about that in a long way. It just seems to work, doesn't it? <laughs> so, uh, I'm I, 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 I'm not sure about that. But we need to get out of the days where we go. Uh, banking doesn't work because uh, there's still a lot of frustration out there, and uh, you know it's uh, we we need to do we need to do better by 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 doing all these innovative things. Excellent. So the the I'm looking forward to the the death of the universal bank and a and a welcome for painless banking. That's what we're looking for in the future. <laughs> Absolutely. Excellent. Paul and Mark, thank you so much that, for sitting down. That, for that's that's that. a dream. I I hope that other. <laughs> and I just want to say, Mark, I just want you. I think your your uh, your background is excellent and on brand uh, with the <laughs> with, with with your with your records. That's excellent. So thank you so much. So um, all of you, please stay on the main stage for our next panel, which is the fintech for life future of work panel. We also have some interactive sessions starting on the session stage. And as always, our expo area is open all day for you to visit and visit some of our rock star sponsors. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.